Jude verse 6 begins with the word and. In other words, verse 6 is connected very closely with verse 5. The word and is a bridge that brings those two verses together. So we can't take verses in isolation, but we look at them in the context of the big picture that scripture is painting, whether that be in one particular book we're looking at Jude, or whether that be with the Bible as a whole, we need to take it in context. In other words, scripture interprets scripture, and that helps us to avoid going off on extremes whereby we take one verse totally out of context and we make it say something that is not endorsed by the rest of the Bible. So the word and, it links, it connects verses five and six. And the angels. Angels were created as ministering spirits. God created them. They're mentioned more than once in scripture. In fact, a few hundred times, 304 in the NIV, we find the word angel mentioned in scripture. 80 times we find the word angels or angels referred to in Revelation. In other words, they do have a significant part to play in the end times. Uh, in creation, so right at the beginning, Job 38, while God created the earth, all the angels sang together and shouted for joy. In the Old Testament, pulling out a scripture there, Genesis 19, two angels arrived at Sodom to rescue Lot. In the New Testament, again, pulling out a scripture, Acts 5, the apostles were in prison, but during the night an angel opened the doors and set them free. And then into eternity, Revelation 7, all the angels fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. So angels are right the way through the scripture from the beginning creation right into eternity and everywhere else in between we find angels there in the bible they have a position of authority we see from the scriptures that angels occupy important positions in god's dealing with mankind but what about the fallen angels back to uh, jude 6 the fallen angels that it's talking about there there are three passages in scripture that we don't have time to look at in this short message revelation 12 ezekiel 28 isaiah 14 and those three passages in particular um, there are separate messages on youtube looking at satan and also looking at those uh, verses uh, in a little bit more detail, but we find that those verses give us the picture of the coup that took place, the fallen angels that were cast down to the earth as disembodied spirits. And this is what we're looking at here in Jude 6, the fallen angels, the evil spirits, the demons, the fallen spirits that we often hear people talking about. That's what they are. That's where they came from, came from heaven, came from a privileged place, but because of their rising up against God, they were cast down to the earth, as I say, as disembodied spirits, kept in chains, kept in chains. What was it, this great sin, that caused them to be cast out of heaven, disembodied spirits, kept in chains? The sin of pride. In verse 5, we saw the devastating effects. Verse 5 in Jude, we saw the devastating effects of grumbling and complaining. And now we see the devastating effect of, of pride. Isaiah 14, five times we find there the word I. I will rise, I will ascend, and so on and so forth. I will place myself above God. Five times in Isaiah 14. Pride is the very centre of sin. Pride was the first sin, arguably, to enter into God's universe, and it will probably be the last to be conquered, because even in our hearts and our lives, there is always that battle, that constant struggle with pride. And so it was pride that caused these angels to rise against God. But as it tells us, they're kept in chains, giving us a picture that they they have been defeated they are awaiting judgment that's what it means there when it tells us they have been or they are kept in chains they are awaiting 
judgment. And we link that with verse 5 in Jude. Though you already know this, I want to remind you. And we can bring that into verse 6. That the angels are waiting judgment. The implication for us is that God always judges sin. Some people think that because they sinned on a Monday and nothing's happened on the Tuesday that they've got away with it. Some people think that because they did something on the Thursday and come Friday no one's found out that they've got away with it. But that is not the case with God. It may be the case with man sometimes we can get away with things but with God we never escape his judgment. Every action is punishable and that's why of course going beyond this message we need a saviour we need someone to save us from ourselves because we can't our good works would never be able to save us from those constant wrong things and thoughts and actions that we do in our lives but sin is always dealt with the angels fell their judgment in the fullest sense is yet to come the partial judgment was cast down to earth but the fullest judgment the true judgment, the full judgment is yet to come. And likewise in our lives, we take that as a warning that we need to live right. We need to live in accordance with our God as, as, as taught us through the scriptures because we want to keep on that right side of God. Not in a sense of fear of God, not in a sense that uh, God is, is punishing us for the sake of it. God loves us. He wants us to live in the right way and so we take all of these things as warnings into our lives that we might be free from that judgment and of course ultimately the only way we can be free from that judgment is to put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ.